and welcome to this Monday's video. You join me as I'm just getting off the London Underground at Euston. Today we'll be heading up to Birmingham New Street with Avanti West Coast. But first, let's head up to street level and have a look around Euston Station. Euston Station is located in the London Borough of Camden, just to the east of Regent's Park. The station is in Fair Zone 1 on the Transport for London network and is served by the Victoria Line and both the Bank and Charing Cross branches of the Northern Line. In addition to this, London Overground services also operate from within the station itself. Outside Euston, there's a statue paying tribute to Matthew Flinders, who circumnavigated and mapped much of the coastline of Australia in the early 1800s. His cat, Trim, who accompanied him on his voyages, is also featured here. The other statue outside the station depicts the late Robert Stevenson, who was a locomotive designer in the 19th century. As we enter the station, the main ticket office is just to my left, although it's certainly advantageous to buy your tickets online and in advance if at all possible, as it will save you a small fortune. Moving further into the station, we find ourselves in Euston's infamously brutalist concourse. I think I must be one of the few people out there who actually doesn't mind it. The station originally opened back in 1837, although present day Euston dates back to the 1960s. Large departure boards loom over the concourse below, although what is missing today is the large crowd to gaze up at them. I filmed this when passenger numbers were still just at a fraction of their pre-pandemic levels, although I can testify that on more recent visits to the station, the crowd has very much returned. Up on the mezzanine level, you'll find a small pub and a couple of takeaways. If you're travelling in first class, which unfortunately I'm not today, you'll also find the Avanti lounge up here. Anyway, before too long, the time comes to head over to the platform for boarding. The service I'll be catching today is the 1023 to Birmingham New Street. All of the platforms at Euston are fully accessible by way of ramps. And here's our ride up to Birmingham in the form of a pair of Class 221 Super Voyages. These trains are diesel multiple units and were built by Bombardier Transportation in Bruges, Belgium between 2001 and 2002. The Super Voyagers have a top speed of 125 miles per hour or 201 kilometers an hour and just like the Pendolinos, Avanti's Class 221s still retain their tilt function. This is necessary to achieve top speed on the West Coast Main Line, as all trains that aren't tilt enabled are limited to 110 miles an hour on this line. One thing that was quite cool is that this train still retains its old Virgin livery, despite having been operated by Avanti for the better part of a year by the time I filmed this. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that the Voyagers have all since been repainted in Avanti livery, or at very least stripped of their Virgin colours. There weren't any seat reservations being offered on this service, so I'm just going to head to the front unit, as I have a feeling it'll be much quieter than the rear one. I'll be travelling in standard or second class today. As expected, seating is in a 2 plus 2 configuration. One thing I did notice is that there were quite a lot of bays of 4 on this train. This is great if you're travelling in a large group and don't worry solo travellers, there are still plenty of airline style seats too. Each unit has a small catering area with counter service. This was closed at the time of filming but has since reopened and I'll leave a link to the menu in the description below. Eventually, I find a seat I like the look of, in the form of a forward-facing airline style seat with good window alignment. Legroom is nothing special, but still enough for our relatively short journey today. A small, but nonetheless sturdy tray table can be found at all of the airline style seats. 
One benefit of the voyages over the Pendolinos is that a plug socket can be found at each of the window seats in standard class. Only the table and first class seats have access to this on the Pendolinos, at least until they're refurbished that is. The usual window blind coat hook reading light combo is also present here, none of which I ever seem to use. Last of all, the seats are pretty comfortable in my opinion. They're nicely padded and well shaped, and to be honest, what more could you ask for? Anyway, before we head up the West Coast Main Line, let's just take a quick look at where we're going today. Our journey this morning will see us heading northwest, calling at Watford Junction, Coventry, and Birmingham International before eventually arriving into Birmingham New Street at about quarter to 12. Total distance to the UK's second city is around 113 miles or 181 kilometres. Scheduled travel time today is 1 hour and 23 minutes and our top speed will be 125 miles an hour. And we depart Euston bang on time at 10.23. We're soon picking up speed as we head north away from the capital and towards our first calling point, Watford Junction. As we make our way north, we find ourselves running alongside the Bakerloo line. We then go flying through Harrow and Wealdstone at the northern end of the line. About a quarter of an hour after departing London, we arrive at Watford Junction. Once a small market town, Watford is located just outside Greater London and marks the northern end of overground services from Euston. The Watford branch of the Metropolitan Line also terminates on the other side of the town. Right, time to take a quick look at what else these trains have to offer. The overhead racks are quite small, due to the train's tapered edges. The stacks at the end of the saloon also aren't very big, so I can imagine there being a shortage of luggage storage should the train be busy. As it is, the train is dead today. While the outside had yet to be repainted, the inside has been refurbished in the time since Avanti took over operation of these trains. It was just a cosmetic uplift more than anything, and I must say, I think that the blue used on the carpets and moquettes suits this train very well. All of the toilets on this train are of the large and accessible variety, and can be found in three of the five coaches. They were all pretty standard really, with everything being clean, well stocked and in good working order. And yes, I must say that they did have that ever typical Voyager smell, 
but thankfully this seemed to be contained to the toilet area and didn't at all escape into the saloon. Last few things, first of all, there's a first class coach in each unit, although I didn't visit on this occasion. Let me know if you'd like to see this covered in a future video. You'll find both wheelchair and bicycle spaces in the front coach. The bicycle spaces are free to use and, while it isn't mandatory, you are strongly recommended to reserve these. Lastly, as you'd probably expect, this train is Wi-Fi enabled. This is free to use and, while it's hardly the fastest out there, it should make do for some light browsing. As we enter this curve, you can really see the tilt function in action. However, despite being clearly visible, I found that unless I was looking for it, I didn't really notice it, and found the overall ride quality of these trains to be very good, even when at top speed. About 20 minutes out of New Street, we arrive at our next calling point, Coventry. The city is home to just shy of 317,000 people and is England's most centrally located city, being closest to the country's geographical centre. A short while later, we arrive at our final calling point, Birmingham International, which serves the nearby Birmingham International Airport as the name suggests. Oh. To summarise the journey, I thought that this was a fast, comfortable and convenient experience. As this is the main railway route between the UK's two largest cities, this line sees frequent service, with about three trains per hour running in either direction at the time of writing. Considering the frequency, speed and comfort of these trains, I don't think that the price is too bad either, with my advanced single costing me £14.50, including rail card discount of a third. You don't even need to book that far in advance to find a fare as cheap as this, as I only booked my ticket two days prior. If you do however want to see a cheaper way of travelling between Birmingham and London, check out my review of the slightly slower Chiltern Railways service I reviewed last year, as I've managed to pick up tickets on their services for under a fiver in the past. So overall, a rather short and pleasant journey, but what did you make of it all? Be sure to let me know in the comments. Welcome to the UK's busiest railway station outside of London, Birmingham New Street, where we arrive on time at 11.46. With that, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to help us out by giving it a like. If you are new to the channel, then you're going to want to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Monday and Friday. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you on Friday.